invited him on because he's been elected the chairman of the Republican study uh, group. And, uh, you know, Jim, welcome, Congressman. Good to have you. Sorry about what's going to happen to your Hoosiers. It's going to be ugly. I feel pretty good about it, Hugh. Uh, it's been 50-something years since the Indiana Hoosier football team has been a, a top-10 team, and I feel good about their chances this weekend. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be another 50 years. Uh, but, uh, you know, enjoy it while you can. Uh, uh, they're playing in the shoe, aren't they? Uh, they are. Yeah, so, gosh almighty, uh, even without the students there, it's going to be a tough, uh, you know, have you watched Justin Field? Have you watched that kid? Have you watched Michael Penix? Yeah, no, I haven't. University football team, he's a, he's a heck of a kid, and uh, Coach Tom Allen has, has given this team a, a life. Who would have ever thought Indiana University would be a football school? That, that's where we are at this point, and we'll see whatever happens on Saturday, Hugh. Um, uh, we're, we're very proud of this football team, and, and uh, it's a sign of what's to come for the Indiana Hoosiers. Well, you already had your miracle this month, which is the number of Republicans elected to the House. So let's go there. I, I, my, my count right now is 222 to 213. I think we hold on to that New York and those Iowa seats. Am I, are my numbers right, Congressman Banks? That's about right. 212, 213, outside chance of 214. It's the opposite of what we thought would happen. I mean, I was with a, a prominent uh, House Republican uh, a pollster and campaign official just two weeks before Election Day. We thought we were going to win. We thought we were going to lose 10 to 15 seats, and it was exactly the opposite. Now, that is, I put that down to Leader McCarthy, Steve Scalise, everybody in the caucus, but also Donald Trump turned out the Republican vote. I mean, he really did. Is, do you credit him as well, uh, Congressman Banks? There's no question about it. I say all the time, when, when Donald Trump was on the ballot in 16 at 2020, our chances um, increased substantially. And we, that's exactly what we saw, his coattails all up and down the ballot. Not just congressional seats, Hugh, but we had state le state legislative seats uh, uh, in the Republican column grow significantly w as well nationwide. That's all because of Donald Trump and the excitement that he brought to our base. And that, as we have this conversation about me taking over the Republican Study Committee, the biggest conversation we need to have is how do we build – upon that winning coalition, bringing the new Trump populist voters together with the traditional conservative voters, the party of Reagan, the party of Trump. We've got to merge those voters in a coalition that can win majorities in 2022 and win the, win the White House in 2024. And I really believe Donald Trump teaches us how to do that. You know, I, I've always quoted uh, Margaret Thatcher, win the argument, then win the vote. And right now she's being badly portrayed in the crown, but she was quite prescient when it came to how you win elections. You win the argument, then you win the vote. The RSC has traditionally been, and maybe it will return under your leadership, uh, Congressman Banks, to be in the idea factory. Would you tell people about the RSC and what it does? Well, it was created in 1973. It's the largest conservative caucus. Right now it's made up of about three-fourths of the entire Republican uh, uh, conference. So uh, there are 199 Republicans in this, in this Congress. We have over 150 of them. Republican Study Committee. We meet once a week. We talk about the major issues on the floor. And you're right, we develop a conservative legislative agenda and we push it. And uh, under the last two years with Mike Johnson as chairman, we, we really put together the conservative playbook, a massive volume of, of conservative bills and ideas that we want to push when we get the majority back. And the, the, the legacy issue, Hugh, for Republican Study Committee is that every single year, while Republicans here and there have lost their way on fiscal responsibility, the Republican Study Committee is the, is the group in the Congress that every single year puts out a balanced budget proposal and shows exactly how it can be done. And that's the first thing that we'll do out of the gate in January. We'll do exactly that. It's, it's never been harder than it is right now to do that with a ballooning national debt. But we will show the American people and we will show our colleagues in Congress that you can balance uh, the, the budget and uh, bring back fiscal responsibility and we'll show how it can be done. Now, I'm glad you're in that job because uh, traditionally they have been the green eye shade crowd, but you know, you're the five ocean Navy guy. You know that we cannot do that at the expense of our armed services. Well, that's right. And that that's where we, we will be uh, picking fights. I mean, the, with the political dynamic uh, where it is today and one of the, one of the very first fights, um, not that we're picking, but the fight that we're going to fight, Hugh, is maintaining the Trump-era defense budget. That'll be a mantra of Republican Study Committee for the next couple of years because the, the socialist uh, left, the squad, they're all for cutting across the board 10% or more 
of our defense budget. We can't allow them to do that and maintain uh, military superiority uh, worldwide and get to where we need to get with our Navy to confront the China threat. Republican study committee is going to lean into that fight and be the, uh, the group that holds the line and says we won't support uh, any measure that would cut uh, the Trump era defense budgets at all. But there are, other, there are some other fights, too, that we have to fight. And right out of the gate, one of the other areas where I think uh, conservatives need to rally around, Hugh, is saving the Hyde Amendment. I mean, Demo Democrats have made it very clear that their one of their first priorities is to eliminate Hyde. What was bipartisan just a few years ago, what Joe Biden supported just five years ago, uh, is now a partisan issue. Uh, de the Democrats want to do away with the Hyde Amendment altogether, and Republicans need to be the group, uh, and the Republican Study Committee needs to be the group in the House that says we're going to do everything that it, that it takes to maintain uh, a, a law that's been on our books that prevents taxpayer funding to go, going toward abortion, and that'll be one of our major fights, too. Well, well, if the House is 222 to 213, you only need to find five Democrats who are pro-life. Can you? This is, I, feel, I feel like you know Abraham walking towards Sodom and Gomorrah. Can you find five Democrats that, that will side with you on the Hyde Amendment? Yeah, I, I, I think that we can. I, I hope that we can. The, the bigger the squad gets, you might have seen the announcement this week where the squad announced that they grew their ranks. They went from four to six or seven. Every time that happens, you start to see the uh, the old, uh, what we used to call the blue dog Democrats, that was prominent 20 years ago. They've dwindled to a very small group in recent years. Stephanie Murphy has tried to revive it, and their ranks are growing as the squad grows. So that that's the group that we can reach across the aisle and hopefully work with on common sense measures that are broadly, it's, the, the Hyde Amendment here is broadly popular with the American people, even yep. those who might yep. be less pro-life than you or, you or I recognize that our taxpayer dollars shouldn't go uh, toward funding abortion. So those are the types of fights that we're going to fight. But I think we have to, President Trump taught us, you gotta, you got to broaden the conservative agenda to appeal to the populist voter. And there are areas that conservatives need to uh, rally around in this moment as well, like, like, like reforming Section 230 has become a new base Republican conservative issue as we defend uh, free speech and fight back against big tech uh, free speech uh, censorship. That's another area for the first time that I want Republican Study Committee to wade into another issue where I think we can have an outsized role in the upcoming Congress too. Well, you know, I look. You know, I, I I'd like to talk to everyone on the committee about that because I think we've got to be careful uh, how we regulate the private sector. I'm not one of those people that want to run out and punish Twitter. I want people to grow parlor sort of thing. But let me ask you about a, a, an issue near and dear to my heart, which is redistricting. I hate the decision in 2015, Arizona State Legislature versus the Arizona Independent Redistricting Commission. And even though redistricting commissions are going to help Republicans this year in Virginia and California, they're unconstitutional in my view. That was a 5-4 decision with Anthony Kennedy in the majority. The court has changed dramatically in the six years since that decision, five and a half years since it came down. Uh, do you expect the RSC to take a hard look at getting rid and getting legislators back in the state legislatures back in control of congressional districts, Congressman. Well, we should. I, I was a state senator for six years, and I, I was a part of the, the last redistricting effort in Indiana uh, ten years ago. And, and this is an area where conservatives should be vocal because if we believe in states' rights and we believe in the and the power of the states and empowering our our colleagues in state legislatures, then. We should recognize that they're, they're the ones who are on the ballot. They're the ones that go before the voters in their district and who will be held accountable for how, uh, how districts are drawn and avoiding gerrymandering. That, that, that's how it happened in my state, in Indiana, and we've gone at lengths uh, to get rid of gerrymandering because of, uh, because of empowering the, the legislators in the process. So it's an area, Hugh, that I haven't given a whole lot of thought to the role that RSC can play, but uh, you're making a very good point. It's something that we should dig into even deeper. Yeah, I think every member of Congress has standing uh, because uh, this this job, I don't mind gerrymandering. It just means that political considerations enter into the drawing of the line. Some people like redistricting. But in any event, the Constitution commits it clearly, as the Chief Justice wrote in dissent, to state legislatures. And I, and I think we ought to give it back. It's in California and Virginia and Arizona and Colorado and Ohio. They've given it away to commissions, and it's, it, they are not accountable. They cannot be voted out. And we have two rules, one man, one person, one vote. And uh, we have one, you can't use race, you can't use any prohibited category to draw the lines. But I mean, uh, 
Standing on the Constitution, if the RSC does that, if we become the party of freedom and the party of the Constitution, you can't go wrong, Congressman. Uh, there's no question about it. I mean, as far as the redistricting goes to you, the state legislators are the ones who are ultimately accountable to the voters. When you when you uh, set up these commissions, there's no accountability in the process. That that, that should scare every American. Uh, and why, as you realize that your your vote is watered down, and uh, it's an area that conservatives should be more outspoken about.